Ima, love math with Peter Ali. Magnificent day to all of you, Emath learners. How are you feeling today? I hope you are not yet tired of learning and educating yourselves. Be motivated. We are halfway in the first quarter now. This week's episodes are the continuation of the topic geometric sequence. Here, we will be dealing with F term of the geometric sequence. The geometric means the finite and infinite geometric series and the problems involving them. Previously, in episode 2, if you still remember, I partly introduced to you the formula in getting the nth term of a geometric sequence, which is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Getting the nth term means finding any term of a given geometric sequence. For example, when we get the 20th term or a sub 20, or the 100th term or a sub 100. We can get this right away by applying this formula. Let us derive the formula by analyzing the first four terms of the geometric sequence whose first term is 2 and the common ratio is 3. From the problem, we form this sequence. 2, 6, 18, 54. 2 is the given first term. The second term, 6, is obtained by multiplying 2 by 3. Likewise, the third term, 18, is obtained by multiplying 6 by 3. And the fourth term, 54, is taken from multiplying 18 by 3. That remains the nth term. Now, let us express each term of the geometric sequence into variables a sub 1 and r. The initial term is a sub 1. Then, we get the value of a sub 2 by multiplying the common ratio to a sub 1. Thus, a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 times r. Similarly, we get a sub 3 by multiplying another r to a sub 2. Thus, a sub 3 is equal to a sub 1 times r squared. Same goes to a sub 4. And this is equal to a sub 4 equals a sub 1 times r to the power of 3. Then let us write all of them into exponential notation. For a sub 2, since only one r is multiplied, then a sub 2 equals a sub 1 times r to the power of 1. For the first term, there is no common ratio yet. Thus, a sub 1 equals a sub 1 times r to the power of 0. Remember, any number raised to 0 is always equal to 1, so its value hasn't changed. Now, let us study the pattern. Look at the relationship of the common ratio and the number of terms n. What do you observe? Did you also notice that the exponents of r is 1 less than the value of n? So what do you think is the value of a sub n? From here, we may conclude that if n is the number of terms, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Let's go back to the example. So if we are going to find the seventh term, just simply substitute the given values to the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. So a sub 7 is equal to 2 times 3 to the power of 7 minus 1. Then simplify the exponent. So, a sub 7 equals 2 times 3 to the power of 6. Since 3 to the power of 6 equals 729, then a sub 7 equals 2 times 729. 
which is equal to 1458. Therefore, the seventh term is 1458. Let us have the second example. Find the tenth term. Here are the given values. A sub 1 equals 1. The common ratio is negative 4 because negative 4 divided by 1 equals negative 4, 16 divided by negative 4 equals negative 4, and negative 64 divided by 16 equals negative 4. Since we are asked to find a sub 10, then n equals 10. Let's substitute the given to the formula. So, a sub 10 equals 1 times negative 4 to the power of 10 minus 1. Simplify, then, a sub 10 equals 1 times negative 4 to the power of 9, or a sub 10 equals negative 4 to the power of 9. And since negative 4 to the power of 9 equals negative 262,144, therefore, the tenth term equals negative 262,144. Let us apply the formula in solving this problem. A certain substance decomposes and loses 20% of its weight each hour. If the original quantity of the substance is 500 grams, how much remains after 8 hours? Let us analyze the problem using this table. At initial time, when time equals 0, the initial weight is 500. This is our first term. After an hour, or t equals 1, it loses 20% of 500, which is equal to 0 0.20 times 500, and this is equal to 100. That means 500 subtracted by the amount lost, which is 100, becomes 400 after 1 hour. And this is our second term. And the loses continues every hour. After 8 hours, what will be its amount? Thus, we are looking for A sub 9. To determine the common ratio, you may divide a sub 2 by a sub 1, which is equal to 400 divided by 500 equals 0 0.80. Or, you may have the easier way. Since the quantity loses 20% every hour, that means the remaining 80% or 0 0.80 is the multiplier in every term. Thus, R is equal to 0 0.80. Substituting the given values to the formula, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1 will lead to a sub 9 equals 500 times 0 0.8 to the power of 9 minus 1. Simplify, then it is equal to 500 times 0 0.8 to the power of 8. Find the value of 0 0.8 to the power of 8 and then multiply to 500. The result is a sub 9 equals 83.89. Therefore, the remaining amount after 8 hours is 83.89 grams. You just learned how to determine the nth term of a given geometric sequence. Now, let's move on to geometric means. Just like arithmetic means, geometric means are the terms between any two non-consecutive terms of a geometric sequence. Such that, in this example, 6 is the geometric mean between 2 and 18, 18 is the geometric mean between 6 and 54, while 6 and 18 are the geometric means between 2 and 54. There are two ways in getting the geometric means depending on the situation. First, if we are looking for one geometric mean only, we may use this formula. M equals positive negative square root of A times B. We get this by assuming that the geometric sequence is represented by A, M, B, 
where m is the geometric mean between a as the first term and b as the last term. Since the ratio between a and m is equal to the ratio between m and b, then m divided by a equals b divided by m. Simplify by cross multiplication. So, m times m equals a times b. Then, m squared equals a times b. Get the square root of the whole equation to get the value of m. Remember that the square root of a number has actually two answers. We count its positive and negative results. This is because negative times negative is equal to positive. That means m here is equal to positive negative square root of a times b. For example, find the geometric mean between 4 and 36. We will make this set up for easy understanding. The given values are a equals 4, b equals 36. We are asked to find the geometric mean which is m. Use the formula m equals positive negative square root of a times b. Substitute the values of a and b. So m equals positive negative square root of 4 times 36. 4 times 36 equals 144. So m equals positive negative square root of 144. Extract the root. Thus, m equals positive negative 12. Since we have two geometric means, then we formed two geometric sequences. First, 4, 12, 36. Here, our r is positive 3. We may also have the second geometric sequence. 4, negative 12, 36. In here, the common ratio is negative 3. Therefore, the geometric mean between 4 and 36 is positive negative 12. Here is an example for two or more geometric means. Insert three geometric means between 5 and 3125. Set up like this. Our a sub 1 equals 5. And since we will insert a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4, 3125 is the fifth term, and n equals 5. Find r by using the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Substitute the given 3125 equals 5 times r to the power of 5 minus 1. Simplify the exponent and divide the whole equation by 5. So, 625 equals r to the power of 4 or r to the power of 4 equals 625. Rewrite the base 625 into a power of 4. Thus, 625 equals 5 to the power of 4. But there's more. Let us not forget that negative 5 to the power of 4 is also equal to 625. Thus, the ratios positive 5 and negative 5 both satisfy the equation. Therefore, r equals positive negative 5. Let us check. If r equals positive 5, then a sub 2 equals 5 times 5, which is equal to 25. a sub 3 equals 25 times 5, which is equal to 125. And finally, a sub 4 equals 125 times 5, which is equal to 625. We form the sequence 5, 25, 125, 625, and 3,125. And its geometric means are 25, 125, and 625. But if our r equals negative 5, then a sub 2 equals 
5 times negative 5 equals negative 25. A sub 3 equals negative 25 times negative 5 equals 125. And lastly, A sub 4 equals 125 times negative 5 equals negative 625. Thus, the sequence we formed is 5, negative 25, 125, negative 625, and 3125. And its geometric means are negative 25, 125, and negative 625. Remember, not all times that we can get two values of R. The third example will give you a hint as to when to have exactly one value of R. Let us study this third example. This time, we insert two geometric means between 5 and 625. From the solution, after substituting and simplifying the equation, we end up to R cubed equals 125. 5 times 5 times 5 equals 125. Thus, 5 cubed equals 125. And so, R cubed equals 5 cubed. Therefore, R equals 5. Can we also consider negative 5 as the value of R? No, R is not equal to negative 5 because negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 equals negative 125, not positive 125. Thus, R is equal to 5 only. These are your hints. When the exponent of R is even number, then there are two values, the positive and the negative values, just like the example number 4. But when the exponent of R is odd number, then it has exactly one value. R is positive if the givens are all positive, and R is negative if the givens are also all negative. I hope you understand now how to get the geometric means, including all the important notes to remember when we deal with exponential equations.